Thank you for joining us uh, this evening. We're going this afternoon in the United States, this evening in Israel. We're going to start momentarily. Thank you very much for uh, joining us this evening. A uh, very difficult time in Israel, of course. This is Doron Perez from World Mizrahi. For our program this evening, Israel Under Attack. Uh, we're all following the news. We all are fully aware of the very difficult situation in Israel, both from outside of Israel's borders and, of course, inside, no less, if not more concerning, so much of the inner turmoil which has broken up in so many of the uh, cities where there's been... Uh, uh, really outstanding uh, living side by side in cooperation for many years and uh, a real concern for many. And really, uh, very few of us could have anticipated not only the last year and a half of Corona, then as Israel came out of it, the, the horrific events of Lagba Omer, and as we were barely reeling and getting after those shiver, shiver, um, you know, funerals and shiver houses, this. Uh, the situation and the conflict and the challenges we have from without and from within. And thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, the purpose of this evening is threefold. We're going to just very briefly say a number of Tehillim uh, with the many, many hundreds which have joined us from around the world. Just a short Tehillim and a Misha Bayrach. We're then going to be privileged to be joined by uh, Major General and Reserves, Yaakov Amidror, an expert in, uh, in, the in the field of Israeli military strategy. And, um, there, and thereafter by Josh Haston on what we can do about it. And essentially the evening is about understanding how we got here, educating ourselves about the current situation, and then, of course, the call to action, to activism, what each and every one of us can do wherever we find ourselves in the world. But in the, uh, in the, in the age-old Jewish way, to begin first and foremost with turning to Hashem at this time where uh, we, we desperately need His Rachamim, both in terms of those who aren't well, in terms of the many suffering and dealing with death, and of, and of course, the well-being of uh, all the civilians of Israel, the well-being of all the uh, soldiers and members of the defense forces, and of course, to bring this conflict uh, to an end as soon as possible. So I'm going to ask Rabbi Lenny Matenki, the co-president of the Israeli USA Religious Alliance of America, to lead us in the first tier, which is going to appear on the screen, Psalm one, two, one, Rabbi Matenki. Shir Lama Alot, Esainai El Harim, may I in your voice read? Ezri, Ezri, Ali Yitain Lamot Raglecha, Ali Yanum Shomerecha. Hine lo yanum velo yishan, shomer Yisrael. Adonai shomerecha, Adonai tzilachal yad yeminecha. Yomam Hashem resh lo yakeka, v'yareach balayla. Adonai yishmor cha mikol ra, yishmor et nafshecha. Adonai yishmor tzedcha uvoecha meata viad olam. So, uh, Tehillim Kuflamed. Shir amalot mimamakim kratich Adonai. Hoi Adonai shima vakuit. Yen ozen chashuvot kol tafadonai. Im avonot yishmor ya. Adonai mi amod ki imcha haslicha lema'an tivarei kiviti Adonai kivetan afshi 
אוהב אלי דברו, אוכלתי נפשי, אדוני משומרים לבוקר, שומרים לבוקר, יאחל ישראל אל אדוני, כי אם אדוני החסד והרבה עם אופדות, אוי והוא יפדה את ישראל מכל אבותיו. Next, uh, we're going to say two tefillot, a tefillah for the cholim, all those uh, recovering, we hope and pray, soon and speedily, and also by Ruvain Terrigan, educational director, to lead us in a heartfelt mishaberach l'cholim. Mishaberach avotenu v'imotenu, Avraham Yitzchak v'yaakov, Moshe v'yaron David u'shlamo, Sarah v'fka Rachel v'leya, Hu yivarech v'yirapeh, את כל חולינו הזקוקים לרפואה שלמה, בעבור שאנחנו מתפללים להחלמתם. בשכר זה הקדוש ברוך הוא, ימלא רחמים עליהם, להחלימם לרפתם ולהחזיקם ולהחיותם, וישלח להם מהירה רפואה שלמה מן השמיים, עם כל חולי ישראל, רפואת הנפש ורפואת הגוף. Thank you, Rav Ruven. And finally, the tefillah I'm going to ask Major General Yaakov Amidror, who continues to give so much as a former National Security Advisor to the State of the Defense Forces in Israel and Senior Fellow at the Jerusalem Institute of Strategy, Yaakov, to lead us in a Mishaberach. Lachayalim, if we could appear on the screen now. מי שבר רחבותינו אברהם יצחק ויעקב הוא יברך את חיילי צבא ההגנה לישראל ואנשי כוחות הביטחון העומדים על משמר ארצנו ובערי אלוהינו מגבול הלבנון ועד מדבר מצרים ומן הים הגדול עד לבואה הערבה ובכל מקום שהם ביבשה באוויר ובים הייתן אדוני את אויבינו הקמים עלינו ניגפים לפניהם הקדוש ברוך הוא ישמור ויציל את חיילינו מכל צרה וצוקה ומכל נגע ומחלה וישלח ברכה והצלחה בכל מעשה ידיהם, ידבר שונאינו תחתיהם, ויעטרם בכתר ישועה, ובעטר את ניצחון, ויקוים בהם הכתוב, כי אדוני אלוהיכם ההולך עמכם, להילחם לכם עם אויביכם, להושיע אתכם, ונאמר אמן. around 25 to 30 minutes of Major General Amidror. I know that uh, day in and day out, day and night in Israel, Jews and non-Jews all over the world, defense establishments and, and civilians, journalists, Major General Amidror is uh, an expert and a spokesman on behalf of what is going on in Israel to give so many insights into the difficult times that are, are happening at the moment. How did we get here? Where are we going? And uh, procedurally, uh, the Major General will talk for the next 25 plus minutes. After about 18 to 20 minutes, we'll open the chat and you can place questions in the chat, written questions. And then there'll be about 15 minutes for questions. We'll read out as so many of the questions we can get through in 15 minutes. So we can move on to the, with Josh Haston, the activism, what we can do each and every one of us uh, about this. So thank you so much, uh, Major General Amidor, at such short notice, and thank you for addressing us, Bechavod. Uh, thank you very much for the, for the opportunity to speak with so, um, in front of so many distinguished, uh, distinguished people. It's more than 250 people, and to each of you, I think um, it's um, important to understand the, the frame. I'm not going to speak about details. The, the event it's, it itself is a very unique one. It's not like the all the other um, operations in, in, in Gaza, unlike all the other operations, that one was initiated completely by the Hamas. In some respect, even surprises. Uh, the beginning of, of the whole event is in Jerusalem. Jerusalem had, um, um, it's, it's a sensitive day, it's the end of, uh, of Ramadan, the, the Eid al-Fitr, the uh, holy, uh, um, holiday of the Muslims. And every year it is sensitive days and, 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 and we know that it's bring with him uh, problems. But here we had a perfect storm. 
Um, uh, towards the end of the, the, the previous week, Abu Mazen um, announced that he is canceling the elections. It means that frustrated very much the Hamas, which thought that behind the corner, there is an opportunity for, for the Hamas to control the um, Palestinian Authority. They, they were sure that they are going to, to win the, the elections. Um, Monday is um, uh, um, um, Yom Yerushalayim and with all the festivals in Jerusalem. Um, uh, Thursday is the last day of, um, of, of Ramadan and the first day of Idel Fitr. Um, uh, Saturday, um, Shabbat is 15 of, um, of May. It's the Nakba day, the, the Tisha Be'av of the Palestinians. This is the day in which they are uh, um, remembering the, 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 the um, disaster of 48. Add to that something which is out of all this context. Uh, there is a dispute between some Palestinians living in some houses in Sheikh Jarrah in Jerusalem. Uh, the owners are Jews, and the and the Supreme Court um, verdict supposed to be announced in uh, in uh, Thursday, and the, the tension within the, the Palestinians in Jerusalem regarding Sheikh Jarrah, not connected to all these political issues, and not about um, the, the the 15 of uh, of May. Um, all that in very tense um, ten days. Uh, and, and by itself is a problematic situation. The tension in Jerusalem was very high. The police made some mistake by decisions to put some restrictions in um, 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 Shechem Gate, what they call the um, uh, Damascus Gate or Bab el Amut. Um, and then they decided to stop uh, Israeli Palestinians and um, going to pray um, in um, Temple Mountain in uh, El Aqsa Mosque in uh, route number one, and they begin to walk um, uh, in, into in, to Jerusalem because they had been stopped by the, the police. And, and all that together made the, the very intensive and, 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 and very um, delicate situation in Jerusalem itself and, and clashes between the police and the and the and, and uh, hooligans in the Temple Mountains, with which uh, uh, so, uh, uh, which uh, um, wanted to stop the prey of the Jews in the Walling Wall, throwing uh, stones and rocks down the the um, the uh, um, down the hill, um, and that was the beginning. Thus which from all our assessment was in a situation in which they wanted to continue the same process in which they got money and, and begin to build something uh, stable in, 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 um, in the strip, had an argument within itself, clash between two friction in the organization. One of them was even more um, um, active than the other headed by the previous head of uh, the, uh, the military wing, uh, Muhammad Def. And in our surprise, they succeeded to uh, convince the leadership of Hamas that they should show that they are leading the Palestinians to put an ultimatum on the table saying, if you don't put, pull yourself from the uh, mountain temple and change your policy in Jerusalem, we will um, launch attack on Israel. And of course, the government of Israel cannot accept the terrorist organization ultimatum. And nine o'clock in the evening, they launch the, um, the rockets and the missiles into uh, to, towards Jerusalem, the didn't reach Jerusalem, it's a few kilometers uh, west of Jerusalem. But that was the beginning of an operation, which unlike all the previous operations, initiated completely by the Hamas about something which is not connected at all to Gaza, but about Jerusalem. And here Israel didn't have any other choice but to react very severely because we cannot live in a situation in which Hamas is dominating the, the whole um, Middle East by putting ultimatums to, to, to Israel. 
Uh, the goal of the IDF in this operation is very um, defined. Uh, we don't have big ideas. We know that we cannot change in such an operation, the situation in the Gaza Strip. It's uh, two million people living uh, uh, within 400, less than 400 square kilometer without any sources. The, 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 the condition is very, very, very poor. They decided that they want Hamas to lead them in free elections in 2006. And Hamas, a terror organization, is taking care more about building its capabilities than about the prosperity of the, uh, of the people. So we know that that cannot be changed. For that, you need something different. In this operation, the goal of the army is very clear, to uh, reduce the ability of Hezbollah, of, sorry, of uh, Hamas, to launch rockets into Israel within succeed yet. We still have a lot of um, rockets and we cannot, we don't succeed to, to stop them. The second mission is to destroy their ability to manufacture rockets and missiles in the future. In this case, the success is probably very good. We uh, succeeded to, um, to eliminate the leaders of the project, uh, the technical and the commanders of the project. Uh, we succeeded to destroy many of the infrastructure that they build for this manufacturing. Uh, so about that, at the end of the operation, Hamas will find itself with much less capabilities to build rockets and missiles in the future. It will not be zero, but much less. Um, the third effort was to kill as many as possible uh, members of Hamas and and especially commanders. Here we have good numbers, probably 100 um, uh, members of Hamas have been killed. A uh, few very important uh, commanders, including the um, um, brigade commander of Gaza itself, the city, um, but it's not enough. Here, um, whenever we will have any, any information, uh, intell good intelligence, we will try to kill more commanders of the Hamas in all, um, in all levels. The third, uh, the third goal is to um, destroy the symbols of authority that Hamas had built in, in Gaza. It's about bank, it's about uh, uh, intelligence uh, security uh, organizations, so on and so forth. And that means a lot of destruction inside the, um, Gaza. And this is the process that we are uh, in now. And I think, and the, the, the fourth um, mission, which uh, was as important as all the three together is a strong defensive efforts. Here, the success is very good. Um, we have only one casualty. One soldier was killed by the tank missile near the, the border. We succeeded to swat at least four teams of anti-tank missiles, which try to launch um, missiles in. Um, um, Iron Dome works very well. Um, um, succeeded to intercept 90% of the missiles which had been launched into Israel and probably uh, would land in populated areas. Up till now, they launched more than 2,000 uh, rockets and missiles. Um, and the, the, the number of interceptions is around 700. Um, but still 10% still uh, land in Israel. We have seven Israelis killed. Uh, run 100 uh, injured. Um, Hamas uh, uh, has probably 100 uh, uh, people which had been killed and uh, 300 uh, in, uh, injured out of them. How many are members of Hamas? I don't know from the 300. Um, and and the, we uh, succeeded to intercept four drones which had been launched by, by Hamas with the, some explosive. Uh, it's not a lot of expo explosive, but it might be very precise uh, weapon because you can uh, 
um, drive it into specific uh, points. Um, now the decision is to continue, to continue at least um, another uh, few days and at the same time to prepare the ground forces because if the launching of the rockets will not be stopped, if Hamas would continue as they are doing now, when we are speaking, towards the center of Israel, um, Ramle, Ram, uh, Ramle in its neighborhood, um, Israel will not have any uh, other choice but go into Gaza Strip with ground forces and to reach the launchers and to destroy them. Uh, it will be very devastating. M many casualties for us, no question, but to move into Gaza with all the tunnels that they have, it means that Gaza will be fully destroyed after such an operation. Doesn't matter how many days we will stay there, um, they only to go in and out, it's distra full destruction of the area that, that the IDF will be. Um, and, and, and we don't want to stay in because we don't want to be responsible for rebuilding Gaza and to provide water, food, and so on and so forth. So we will go in and out. Uh, how many days we will be there, I don't know. It depends on the ability to destroy the, the launchers and to stop the launching. Uh, but we don't have any other choice because the, the alternative is to let Hamas, the agenda in uh, the Palestinian area, in, in the Middle East, and to destroy all the achievements of Israel in the in, in, in the Middle East and to uh, bring uh, some countries in the Middle East, mainly Iran, the idea that Israel can be um, um, put in a knees and, and this is something that we cannot allow ourselves. So the situation is, is very problematic. Add to that the fact that parallel to what happened in Gaza, the Palestinians, Israelis, the Arab Israelis, um, are rioting um, in many um, cities, um, places or settlements in which the, 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 the Arabs, um, there is a question between the, the uh, experts if it is deep problem um, relating to the relations between the Arab Israelis and the state, or it is uh, something which is led by criminals and hooligans, and, and it is not about the Arab society, but about the problem inside the Arab society, which cannot fight the, the crime uh, families by themselves. And, the, and this is a, a mistake which was done by the police in the last two years, during which they didn't fight the uh, crime uh, families inside the Arab society. And now they are not killing only Arabs because they killed in the last two years, many Arabs have been killed by Arabs as part of this war between the, 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 those families. And now um, it is going out. Um, and when you have a um, strong uh, criminal uh, system within a minority uh, community, at the end of the day, it spill out into the majority community. And this is what uh, some of the experts say happened here. Uh, others say that it is more profound. It is about ideology, it's about religion, it's about the relations between the Arab Israelis and the and the state, and, and 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 it doesn't matter what is the reason. It's very devastating. It's very problematic, and we will have to deal with it after we will um, finish with Gaza, and maybe we'll have a government here in Israel. And you know, after four elections, we don't have and government yet. So this is the situation on the ground. Uh, very, very problematic, not easy. Um, they are launching rockets to the line from from Gaza to the north uh, line. It's around the uh, Ranana, Erzeliya, Kfar Saba. Uh, they didn't reach north of this uh, line. Ranana is the, um, the uh, north point to which they launch. Um, they didn't reach Ranana, but uh, still uh, Ranana, people are going to shelters uh, once in, uh, in 24 hours. Um, the, 
all over Israel, the life will continue. We, we don't stop uh, walking, uh, preparing, everyone is preparing for the holiday. Around Gaza, the 40 kilometer around Gaza, um, from Ashdod to Be'er Sheva, and within this uh, uh, line, it's a very problematic situation. Uh, many uh, um, waves of, of, uh, of rockets and, and missiles. Uh, the Iron Dome works very well, um, intercepting 90% of the, of the missiles and, and the rockets. Uh, the, um, but 10% out of uh, 2000, which had been launched into Israel, and um, it's, it's a big number. I think that less than 100 missiles and rockets landed inside Israel. We have seven people have been killed, almost um, around 100 uh, um, wounded uh, this, du during the, this operation. But uh, I think that the, the, the mood in Israel is, is, is strong and, and they're encouraging the, go the government to continue with the operation. Um, if thought that the political situation will make a problematic uh, process, on the contrary, the, the, at least as it is, looks from the outside, the cooperation between the Ministry of Defense and the Prime Minister is, is okay. Um, uh, as far as can be judged from the outside and don't leak anything from inside, it means that they are cooperating and, and they, they, they are backing the decisions which um, offered by the by IDF. The IDF needs a few days to, con to continue to finish its uh, plan and then to decide if uh, the ground forces are going in or not. Uh, this is the situation on the ground. Um, if you have any question, I will be more than happy to answer. So, Yaakov Dev, thank you very much, Major General Amidror. There's uh, there are two questions at the moment, a number of questions coming in, but the first two questions are similar to each other. The question is, how dangerous is the, the Lebanon's potential involvement? And connected to that, is there a concern that if Israel has to enter Gaza and have a ground operation, does that raise the possibility, in your opinion, of an attack from the north of Hezbollah? Would Hezbollah be potentially ready for such an attack? And do you see that as a, an eventuality? Um, theoretically, it can happen. It cannot be excluded. Um, but we judge on, based on history, it never happened. Never happened that Hamas came to help Hezbollah when we had an operation in Lebanon. And, 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 and Hezbollah didn't come to help uh, uh, for helping uh, Hamas when he had operations in uh, Gaza more than once. So historically, it didn't happen. It doesn't say anything about the future, but this is something to learn from. The situation of Hezbollah is very uh, problematic. Um, Lebanon is, is um, collapsing economically. They don't have food, they don't have water, they don't have electricity. It, slowly, slowly, it's becoming like Venezuela. Um, I don't think that Nasrallah will take the risk that um, that he will come to save Hamas, but at the same time, Israel will distract Lebanon because you understand that in this situation, Israel will be in a, in, in in the corner and will act uh, according to that, meaning use all its kinetic force to to attack uh, Hezbollah. And, and the, the, the situation will be devastating for Lebanon, not just for uh, Hezbollah. It's a very problematic point from the, uh, very problematic situation from the point of view of, of uh, Israel. It's uh, to, to, to act in both sides of Israel is not going to be easy uh, for the IDF, uh, but it is something that we know how to do uh, we, but it's very bad uh, circumstances, no, no question about it. Thank you. The next question that we've been asked, you know, everyone's asking about the long-term solution. Is this the destiny now that uh, there's no solution? Every couple of years, we break the infrastructure as much as possible when they attack, then they amass arms, then we do the same thing. Is there no more deterrence left? Is this a cycle that's going to continue? Is there any way to break the cycle of, uh, you know, the, the, the cycle that we've been in since they pulled out from Gaza? I said at the beginning, uh, to solve 
a situation in which uh, two million people are living within 400 square kilometers, even a little bit less, without any natural sources um, that we have to provide them everything from water to electricity. Uh, I don't see a good solution. Uh, this is why our uh, goal are very modest, is to, to achieve quietness for a few years. Um, I don't know how such situation can be solved, by the way. And this is why the Egyptians never uh, were ready to accept the Palestinians in Gaza and say, this is a problem without a solution. And, 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 and it is so. Um, there is one solution to Gaza, immigration. If one million Palestinians will immigrate, if one million immigra people immigrating from Gaza may, may save Gaza. Other than that, Gaza is, is becoming uh, more problematic every year because of the number of people who are living within 400 um, square kilometer. And to add to this problematic situation um, is the fact that they decided to elect Hamas to lead them in free elections in 2006. And the uh, as pra, as, uh, um, terror organization, Hamas is not uh, taking care for prosperity, uh, food or something like that. They, they, they are building their military forces. So if you have this situation on the ground, uh, this number of people, this um, amount of, uh, of uh, newborn uh, children every year, an organization which what I had in mind is the destruction of Israel and for that they're ready to do everything in, in, including taking um, assets from their own uh, people and to build the military uh, capability that they have today and they want to have in the future, I don't see a solution to Gaza. Yeah, a problem we're gonna just have to continue somehow to, to manage. Next question, uh, you know, we know that Iran is always in the background. To what extent is the, do you think the timing of this war has got to do with Iran pulling the strings? I don't know about any uh, good information connecting Iran to the um, to the uh, um, to the timetable that we are facing now to the specific events. But Iran is there all the time. Iran build uh, innovating uh, the Islamic Jihad, the, the second organization in Gaza Strip financing and, and, and controlling it in a way indirectly. Um, Hamas build, uh, got a lot of money from Iran in the past. All the know-how, how to, to, to build the missiles and how to manufacture them came from Iran. Many Hamas members um, got training in Iran. So Hamas is, is, is there helping Hamas whenever they can and, and whatever they can. Uh, I don't know, maybe the intelligence guys have better knowledge than mine. I don't know about any piece of information connected Iran to the specific event in Jerusalem or in Gaza. Uh, next question. We've got quite a number of questions. We won't get through all of them, but uh, for the next, we'll continue for the next 10 minutes for questions. The Abraham Accords, do you think that what has happened here will in any way prejudice the success of the Abraham Accords? It's a very good question. And I don't think that anyone has an answer. Uh, mm -hmm. It very much depends how it will be ended in Gaza. Mm -hmm. The more we succeed to destroy Hamas capabilities, and it will be clear that Hamas lost in this operation. And, and I think that here we will see something which we saw in Lebanon in 2006, um, Nasrallah and his people were very happy during the operation. They succeeded to stop uh, the IDF and so on and so forth. But then it came out and counted their casualties and destruction. They understood that that was a big mistake. And Nasrallah said, if I would know that this is uh, the operation that I have to face, I wouldn't begin it. I hope that that what will happen uh, regarding Hamas at the end. I don't know yet. It's too early to judge. It very much depends on what we will succeed to achieve in the next uh, few days, how many commanders we succeed to kill and, and what facilities we succeed to identify and to destroy. I don't have a good answer to it yet, but it very much depends on the results of the, of the operation. 
Next question, the, what's come out with the Israeli Arabs, which you know you spoke about, whether it's from criminal, you know, not dealing with organized crime and the families or whether it's ideological. What do you think will be? Do you think this is do you think this has brought out something which has really surprised and set us back? Or, you know, how do you see this panning out? Do, do you think this has become a major issue that was simmering? For me, for me, it was the biggest uh, surprise in the whole event. Um, the situation is, is a severe one. It is not going back to square one after the, the, the end of the operation. And I think that here cooperation between the government and the leaders of the uh, Arab communities will have to lead to some mm -hmm. how, how and what can be done to change the situation. For sure, the, 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 the uh, police will have to be much more involved with big forces inside the Arab um, uh, communities to clean it from weapon systems, to fight the criminal uh, um, families. Otherwise, we are, we are making the Arab minority um, um, kidnapped by the, by the uh, criminal families. It, it, it's a big mistake. At the end, we will have to pay the price. We, the whole community in Israel, the whole citizen of Israel. Um, if you look at it, you see that it happened in other countries. It's like the yellow uh, um, uh, rioting in, 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 in Paris or the, 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 what, what happened in, in, in the United States of America in many, in many cities. But here it is the fine minority that it is hardly can be identified with the idea of a Jewish state. And this is what makes these riots more problematic. Uh, it's, not, it's not demonstrations, it's riots. It means it's, it's kind of a pogrom. And here the, 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 the police lessons should be very, very, uh, clear and, and the government will to change the attitude towards the, the, uh, the Arab community, including uh, fighting the criminal Kurigans, which are now leading the, the society there. Mm -hmm. Next question, the, uh, the Biden administration, to what extent do you think that the change of administration emboldened Hamas to do what they've done? Do you think it's a significant factor? I don't know. I don't think it's a significant factor. I think it's more about the sensitivity of Jerusalem, um, which was an opportunity for Hamas, which felt frustrated after the abolishing of the of the elections, and uh, add to that the the, the uh, relations within its leadership. I think maybe you know in indirectly under the frame of the change in the world. It makes the Hamas feeling that, uh, unlike Trump, time United States of America will not let America Israel to react. By the way, they made a mistake. Um, but I think that this is not the, the main factor in their decision. Not at all. Mm -hmm. Next question: uh, do, do you do you think the has the has the Israeli military establishment been surprised by anything that Hamas have done in terms of their? quality of their weaponry, the, 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 the reach of the missiles, or is this, you know, not surprising? No, up till yeah. now, up till now, we don't have any real surprise. The surprise was the fact that they were ready to initiate, but mm -hmm. with all the capabilities, I think that nothing surprised the professionals, intelligence uh, officers. Uh, what they are doing is what were the expectations. Mm -hmm. Someone has asked about, you know, uh, Aliyah, you know, there's many people planning making Aliyah. Do you foresee the... They are uh, more than welcome. Yeah, yeah. They are, the, they are yeah. more than welcome. The, the, the question is, do you foresee uh, any eventuality as a result of this, that it's any less safe to be in Israel than it is? I don't know. You, you, are, you, yeah. are in better position. you are in better position to answer it. I don't see any reason. I know that during the operation, a uh, few hundred uh, um, Jews made Aliyah. Uh, parallel to the operation, and we had operations in the past, and we probably will, will have in, in, the, in, in the future. Um, uh, I hope that it will not stop the Aliyah. Aliyah is very important uh, 
uh, issue in Israel and uh, that should continue. Do you think that uh, in terms of world pressure, do you think that uh, Israel will be able to continue as long as they need to, or do you think the pressure will end up being a factor in, in where this Up till now, ends? there is no any pressure. Up till now, there is no any pressure. And because they are launching rockets into missile, I don't see anyone who has the moral um, ability to press Israel to stop, on the contrary. And anyhow, it's the interest of Israel. And if it will be a pressure, we have to stand uh, and mm -hmm. to act with the pressure. Mm -hmm. Okay, one or two more questions. To what extent do you think the fact that there have been ongoing elections in Israel and there's no stable government at the moment, do you think this has uh, in any way contributed to the anarchy at the moment, which seems to be Israel? Uh, do you think that's the fact? I don't see any. I don't see uh, any any connection. If we had a government, I don't think that that would change the policy regarding Jerusalem or the criminal um, elements in the in the uh, Palestinian Israeli society, um, or it, it would not change Hamas attitude towards Israel and not the friction within Hamas or the all the event in Jerusalem in this week. I think it's irrelevant. Mm -hmm. okay. And finally, just perhaps a final question is um, many people are very surprised by um, how distorted things are being portrayed. I think people are also seeing in America, you know, in, in New York, uh, major Palestinian sort of demonstrations. And there's a real sense that, you know, almost out of the blue, we had the Abraham Accords, and things were looking so rosy in Israel and the, uh, you know, the situation post Corona looked so good. And then all of a sudden, uh, this comes along in su such a outpouring of prejudice. And um, and do you feel that uh, you know you, what could be done about this in terms of the does Israel is there anything that can be done differently in terms of Israel's you know um, its ongoing advocacy issues? We're going to hear from Josh in a moment. But is there anything in your opinion from your strategic vantage point that can and should be done differently from Hasbara point of view? I, my, my experience is that I don't know about anyone who succeeded um, to convince anti-Semite um, Jews or non-Jews. I don't know if about anyone who succeeded to convince pro-Palestinians um, Jews or non-Jews. I don't know anyone who succeeded to, to, to convince uh, those who hate uh, uh, both Jews and, and Israelis and the state of Israel by giving good arguments. Um, we have to continue to work very hard, but mainly to support the supporters. I don't see anyone being, um, anyone which will change his mind by good argument, uh, which the Israelis will put on the table. And here it's, it's very clear. Unlike all the previous operations here, it was initiated by Hamas. Nothing happened between us and Gaza. On the contrary, we were in a process of finding better solutions for the people in Gaza. So um, it is against their own interest, initiated by Hamas, and, and still no one who was against Israel before that is becoming pro-Israel after that. It's, it's it's not connected. It's not connected to the reality, to the facts. Uh, you know, like saying that in uh, our uh, um, Sheikh Jarrah, it is settlers. It's a dispute between owners of buildings and tenants of buildings. It happens in the answers every ten minutes. Um, it's happened to be these are Jews and these are uh, Arabs. Um, it's it's. This is a dispute that at the end will be uh, the verdict of the of the court will be important, not the if it is if they are Jews or, or Arabs and so on. Um, but no one will be convinced if he is anti-Israeli, he says it's occupier settlements and so on and so forth. Um, someone told me a uh, peaceful prey in the in the El Aqsa. I said mm -hmm. peaceful. They throw rockets and, and stones and, 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 and metals down to the walling wall just to stop. The, they didn't achieve anything, but to stop the, 
the prey of the Jews in the walling wall. What, what, what peaceful here, I don't see. So, I mean, those who are against us will remain against us. What we have to make us behind to, to give the facts on the ground and the logic of our actions, it's mainly to support our supporters, to convince them to, be, to continue to be our supporters. I don't know about even one person who changed his view about Israel or Jews because we had good argument. Uh, Major General Amidjor, thank you so much for this presentation and for all you have done and continue to do uh, for the Isra Israel's defense establishment and for helping us try and understand the really difficult situation and unpack it for us and create some type of clarity. And I think uh, many of the things that you said have given us a lot of clarity and a lot of food for thought. I also want to thank you at the short notice for joining us. And also just to say that two hours ago, you spoke to many of our shlichim around the world a Hebrew talk, and we were debating whether this talk should start at 9.30 Israel time or 10.30, and part of the factor, part of the factor was that Gen Major General Amidor has a daf yomi shiur between quarter to 10 and half past 10, another Kiddush Hashem, so we said, I don't want to come, we don't want to come between you and your daf yomi, and that's an amazing Kiddush Hashem to continue learning Torah and serving the Jewish people in terms of what you're doing. We deeply appreciate your time. Thank you very much, Major General Amidor. Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom and Chag Sameach, and uh, we hope to celebrate uh, Shavuot uh, next week. Thank you very much. Thank you. We go into the second part straight away with, with uh, Josh Haston. You know, it's one thing to understand, and it's one thing to educate. It's another thing to, to act. And I want to thank my friend and colleague, Rabbi Terrigan, for ensuring that we didn't only have a, an educational talk, but also one of a plan of action. And we all know what can we do. You know, we can educate ourselves. We can feel a little bit better, but we want to know what we can do. And um, we really deeply appreciate you joining us also, Josh, at very short notice. Uh, Josh Haston, very popular Israel activist, international spokesperson for Gush Etzion, familiar to many of us. Uh, we've had over 300 people joining this call. And this, uh, you know, at very short notice from all around the world. And Josh, really, the, the time frame for everyone is for the next 15 minutes, just to give us a sense. You know, we're all sitting all over the world. What can we do? What can we do? What should we be doing? What, what, what are the things you can do which practically can make a difference if you can help us with that? And then we'll also open it in about 10 minutes time. The chat's going to be closed. In about 10 minutes time, we'll open up and we'll have a number of questions for you, Josh, as well. So we can come out of this not only with an understanding what it is we should be doing. Josh, thank you so much for joining us. And what can we should be doing? What's the way forward? Thank you, Josh. Firstly, thanks so much to the world is Rafi. It's truly an honor to be here. It's an honor to be speaking after a general on the drawer. Um, and I see a lot of familiar faces out there. I just want to know, I know not everyone has their videos on right now, but to those who do have their videos on right now, who out there, raise your hand, who feels helpless right now? Who's out there feeling helpless? I see some hands going up. A lot of people feel helpless, and that's completely understandable. Let me just say that I just got back yesterday. I was down on the Gaza border, less than a kilometer away, uh, reporting for JNS News about the situation down there. And let me just say that the situation is helpless, but it is not hopeless. I saw the brave members of our IDF being uh, prepared for an operation on the Gaza border yesterday. I saw the brave residents of several of the communities down there. And despite everything going on, you know, this has been our story for 4,000 years. As we say every Pesach, Shabachol Dor Vador, right? That's what we say every Pesach. So as hard as it is, I don't want anyone to lose hope. Let's not despair. Let's remember we have a state, we have an army. We are proud Jews. We are strong Jews. I personally am the son of Holocaust survivors, not the grandson, not the great grandson. I am the son of survivors. And I'm sitting here in the state of Israel, uh, who, who would have imagined uh, 70, 80 years ago. Um, a very prominent Israeli activist called me this week. I'm talking about a guy who has thousands and thousands of followers on all the social media outlets. And he was feeling pretty down. He was feeling like he couldn't make a difference uh, in this latest round. And I told him that he has to stay the course. He has to keep going. First of all, I believe if you stand up for Israel and the Jewish people, um, you're going to get a bracha from above. That's number one. So that's that's my Dvar Torah for this evening. I believe that this is a just cause and we have the right to defend ourselves and stand up. We should stand up for Israel and the Jewish people. Um, number two is you never know who you will inspire to take action for Israel. 
And uh, Josh, a, uh, so, Josh, sorry, to, Josh, sorry. Yes. Hello. Uh, Josh. Yeah. Sorry, the sound isn't great on your side. Just check the internet. It's a, it's a little bit hollow. Let's see. Let's, let's, okay. let's see know, how we well, go. Maybe with the speaker. Let's I try again. This. Any better? Check one, two, three. No, not better. So what I, I'm going to ask is, I actually have. A I mean, it's okay. I have I have a backup. Not bad. Uh, it's, not it's not bad. I have a backup machine here. If the technical person wants to switch it over to Joshua A. Haston. I'm also on with a second device here. If you want to do that, I can switch your phones and use the other device. If you can use the technical person here, hold, hold yeah. on. Yeah, well, let's try. He's going to try. Let's see. Hello. Is that any better? Can you hear me? Yeah, I think that's better. We can see you twice, and we can uh, he see your hands and your face. There we okay. Go. Yeah, there that's better. Go. Thank you. That's better. Thank you. Okay, we'll do that, and I will. There we go. Better. Yeah, that's better. Thank you. Okay, and I'll turn off the other one so we don't have that double double effect. So anyway, I was speaking to this pro-Israel advocate. The guy's got tens of thousands of followers, and he was down, and I told him. He has to keep going. The haters are out there. The people who are spreading vicious libel about Israel, anti-Semites, they're out there and they're a very loud group. Okay, crude, very crude at times. And they tell lies, but we have to stand up for the truth. Whether you're, this doesn't have anything to do with being left-wing or right-wing or Ashkenaz or Sfard or Israeli, or I know a lot of Americans or people in the West are listening to this program here tonight. You have to stand up for the truth and you have to stand up for Israel, okay? Whatever your political bent is, there's a basic truth out there I think that we can all agree on and you need to share that truth. So this is, so far I've given you just an introduction. Let's talk practical. Number one, knowledge is power, okay? You must be educated on the issues. You need to know the truth and how to respond to those lies. Here's an example I always get a question and I know you don't have the ability to unmute yourselves. I always ask people when I speak to groups, I say, what's wrong with this statement? Okay, the PLO was founded in 1967 with the goal of stopping Israeli settlement activity. Anybody know what's wrong with that statement? And if you were able to unmute yourselves, I would, you know, I would ask that question and people would have all different kinds of answers. And I would say, well, in reality, when was the PLO actually founded? It wasn't founded in 1967. It was founded in 1964, three years before anything uh, any so-called settlement ever, ever, ever existed. So, and it doesn't matter if you're watching me now or agree or disagree with, with policies in Judea and Samaria. This is just an example. The point is there's so many lies out there, whether it's random haters, even lies spread by certain members of Congress. Unfortunately, if you see the lies, you must speak out. You have to know the facts. You have to educate yourself. Listen, there are different types of people out there when it comes to Israel. There are pro-Israel uh, advocates out there. There are pro-Israel journalists out there. There are anti-Israel uh, journalists out there, or anti-Israel advocates. And, and I've seen this myself, some journalists who um, are not pro-Israel and not anti-Israel. They simply have been dropped in Israel. I don't know how many international journalists are here covering the current situation, but a lot of them don't have an opinion and don't understand the realities of the situation. Those are the people in the middle, okay? And I think it's our responsibility to target those people in the middle who don't have an opinion. Try to reach them before they get caught up in the Palestinian Authority propaganda machine. And for many, many years, you have journalists coming here to Israel being wined and dined by the PA or back then the PLO, and they automatically adopt their narratives. These are the people we have to go after, those whose opinions we can influence using all the tools uh, at our disposal. Um, so again, uh, that's, that's another thing that we can do. If you're watching this from outside of the United States, I would recommend get in touch with your representatives to share the truth. Let your congressmen, the people who represent you in your district, the congressmen and congresswomen know that the people of side with Israel. There is a right and a wrong here, 
and make sure your representative gets it right. Even if they do it for political reasons, even if they're not you know, amazing pro-Israel advocates, make sure that they know that their district is pro-Israel. And that will absolutely, I believe, make a difference. And number four is probably the biggest one today, social media. So many tools at our disposal, whether it's Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, share the truth out there using these tools. What started the current violence, okay? And it's spread at the beginning of uh, Ramadan. I can pose that question to you. I know you can't really answer right now. Many, many theories and many excuses used by our enemies are now firing thousands of rockets at us as to what started the violence. The main reason, the main reason is the PA and Hamas, the, uh, the officials, they mobilized thousands by claiming, and this is a 100 year old propaganda tool that the Jews are invading the Al-Aqsa Mosque. The Jews are Judaizing Jerusalem. But the, the, the claim of the mosque, this is a technique, a technique, used, technique used for 100 years to launch violence, okay? And I remember a few weeks ago, you had situations where Arabs in Jerusalem were attacking Orthodox Jews and posting it on TikTok, and the whole thing spiraled out of control. This uh, was a copycat, apparently, of things that were happening and happening in uh, New York City in recent months. Um, but back to social media, they're using TikTok for evil. They're using TikTok to, as a way to uh, make fun of Orthodox Jews and smack them around. Uh, use TikTok or get your kids and grandkids to use TikTok. And I've seen plenty of videos out there in recent weeks spreading the truth. You can share the truth uh, using um, TikTok or Twitter, uh, you know, today in today's reality, when people, especially politicians, want to get a message across, and it doesn't have to be politicians, it could be Israel advocates, they do it on Twitter. You don't have these big press conferences anymore. You have social media and particularly Twitter. I encourage you to make videos, make a 60 second video saying, I support the state of Israel and Israel's right to defend itself and blast it out there. If everyone, we have about 300 people right now watching this, if everybody in, in 15 minutes from now goes out and makes a one minute video, saying, I support Israel's right to defend itself. Think how many people you could potentially reach and combat all of the haters out there. 30 seconds, 60 seconds, make a short video, get that message out there, um, you know, make them interesting and entertaining. Uh, you know, they don't have to be fancy schmancy. There are those people who know how to do it, but just so there's a chance that it'll be shared. Get the message out there. And there's also, of course, mainstream media. And believe it or not, some people still read newspapers, not just on Fridays in Israel or on Sundays uh, in, in the United States. If you see, see something that's misleading about Israel, write a letter. Write a letter to the editor. I know it sounds old-fashioned to write letters to the editor, but they're still being published. Or write an op-ed uh, to your local newspaper to clarify the situation, take action. If something isn't right in the paper, use the Twitter handle of that media outlet and bring it to the forefront, bring the issue which you feel uh, is incorrect or not factual to the forefront and politely ask them to is issue a correction. If something, uh, if something you read, you feel is inaccurate when it comes to Israel. I've seen over the last 24 hours or so I'm well, moving on to another point here. Uh, many pro-Israel rallies being organized. Uh, a lot of folks are getting together. And so if you want to do something like that in your community, great. call the local uh, TV station and say, we're going to have hundreds of people marching for Israel in the streets of Atlanta, Baltimore, Indianapolis, wherever it is. Call the local press and invite them out and explain to them why you're marching for Israel. Okay, create an event. Uh, get excited about Israel. When other peop people are bashing Israel, get excited about Israel. The last two things I want to say before we open it up to questions are not related to media or social media. And I'm not going to specify or single out any particular organizations. I'm happy to, to bring up uh, World Mizrahi here. There are tons of organizations out there that combat anti-Israel media bias or are actually saving Jewish lives whether it's providing security equipment, whether it's providing medical equipment, whatever it is, Torah organizations that do amazing things, even hosting this, and Mizrahi is not telling, they didn't tell me to say this, World Mizrahi didn't tell me to say this, but 
you know, hosting an event to get the truth out there so people can have the tools to go back uh, in their communities and get the truth out about, about Israel. Give tzedakah, give tzedakah, number one, it's a mitzvah, number two, it can help these organizations sustain themselves and so that the truth about Israel can be shared. So I guess that might be my second Vart Torah tonight. Maybe I, have, maybe I even have a third Vart Torah. The last thing you can do practically is prayer. I can't tell you how many times I get messages on social media from people all over the world, a lot of them Jewish, some of them not Jewish, saying that they are davening for Israel. And again, I can't tell you which prayers God is going to act on. I, I don't know. You don't know. But it doesn't hurt to prayer. Uh, I'm a believer that God hears all, all, all of these prayers, every prayer that goes up to him. Sometimes he says yes, and unfortunately, sometimes he says no. We may never understand why, but it never hurts to pray for Israel, pray that our enemies can no longer hurt us, pray for true peace. Will it happen soon? Who knows? Mashiach, maybe, maybe he's on his way. Please, God, he, he should be on his way. But prayer is something you can do. Again, that has nothing to do with the media aspect of it, but I still am a believer in, in prayer, and I think that uh, it is truly appreciated. The people in Israel here appreciate um, your prayers, and I think it makes a big, big difference. So I'll now turn it back to you for any questions that you have on, uh, on anything that I've talked about. Thank you. We're going to have about 10 minutes or so for questions. Just to say, uh, Josh, uh, while the questions are coming in, just one that I wanted to ask. I saw... I'm sure many people here are familiar with Trevor Noah. He's actually South African. I knew him when he was a comedian in South Africa. And of course, he's now done, you know, made it big in the Daily Show. He's generally stayed away from anything to do with Israel and the Palestinians. And now he released something this last week where he expressed an opinion on it, which I know a lot of people were outraged with. So a celebrity of that you know, uh, you know, with that type of reach, what, what could be done there? You know, you see these celebrities sort of, you know, saying things. Do you think the rank and file of any of us, the 300 or so people in this call, is, is there something we could do about that? Or is that, yeah. you know? I actually just tweeted out something uh, about Trevor Noah. Just right before I came on a few minutes ago, somebody exposed the hypocrisy of Trevor Noah because uh, several years ago, he did a whole stand-up routine about some sort of incident in which police uh, opened fire on some miners, I believe, in South Africa. I think it was in South Africa. Um, so he's, he's an absolute uh, hypocrite. And it's very, very difficult. You have uh, Dua Lipa and you have other celebrities and stars who have millions and millions of followers. But you never know when something can go viral from one person or a group of people. I give you an example. In 2015, I personally uh, was nearly lynched by an Arab mob uh, near the town of Tekoa in Gush Etzion. And immediately after, thank God, I survived. I got out of there. Uh, people were hurt in the incident. I put together a two-minute video explaining what happened to me. Um, I put it up on Facebook. And within 24 hours, I had 400,000 views, 400,000 views. So again, Trevor Noah's got millions of followers and these other people, celebrities have millions of followers, but you never know when you produce some sort of content as simple as a two minute video showing where I was nearly lynched and showing how people were literally bleeding from the rocks being thrown at their cars. You never know when something like that is going to go viral. So it's difficult, absolutely difficult because he's got the numbers, but you know, if you take 300 people here and everyone shares one, let's say, particular clip, it could spread like wildfire and it could get to a point where maybe even Trevor Noah notices and uh, uh, perhaps takes, takes back some of the things he says. Or maybe you would have some other uh, high profile people realizing the reality of the situation and standing up for Israel. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to read the following question. Forgive me, I'll go offline just to read it to you like this the divide between orthodox jury and the conservative and reform branches seems to be getting wider every day how can we turn our hashkafa halachic debates and turn down these debates and get the message to them about israel it's a, that's very very difficult it's a very difficult situation because i know that there's a a gap when it comes to the different branches and and how they relate to israel and their issues with the, uh, prayer at the western wall uh, it, it's, it's extremely difficult, but you know what, uh, as Jews, we, I think we have to find common ground. We have to find things that unite us and it shouldn't have to be, you know, in Israel, 
unfortunately, you get a real sense of unity um, in, in, in bad situations. And I think the, the biggest, uh, you know, the, the, the example I would use is when the three boys were kidnapped in 2014 and murdered by Hamas. And then we went into another round, a previous round there in 2014. Everyone felt united as one. And it, I don't think it needs to take a, a tragedy or something bad or a war. I, I think that is really the, the major challenge. If we can have unity amongst ourselves, then nothing can knock us down. No any, enemy can, can defeat us. So it's a major challenge. Um, and, uh, and I think we, we need to be united. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. One other question I'm just going to read to you, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. As follows. Somebody's written here about Gal Gadot. Um, you know, she used to be a little bit more, um, you know, pro. She made comments previously. She seems to have been very part of this time around. Um, any comments on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I saw what, I, what she wrote. It seems like she's taking the middle ground, saying we want peace on one side, we want peace on the other side. Um, I, I don't know, you know, where Gal Gadot's head is. I know that she is, from what I understand, she lives in Hollywood right now. So I don't know if... You know, she has been uh, she is succumbing to to the Hollywood uh, overall Hollywood mentality out there. And, and as they call it, La La Land, uh, I, I don't know. But it seems that on, on this issue, I read some of her statements or her major statement or her main statement just before. And it seems like she is, you know, basically saying that she's in the middle. She's neutral. She wants peace amongst all peoples. I mean, everyone wants peace amongst all peoples. But, you know, we want a real peace. We don't want a, a peace where, uh, or any type of ceasefire where we cease and they continue to fire as we've seen over the years. Um, so I can't speak for Gal Gadot, but uh, I did read her statement and I see it's, uh, it's I guess is, is balanced, but that doesn't necessarily mean that she has the high ground in terms of uh, the morality, um, especially uh, after what's now, a couple thousand rockets have landed in our uh, communities over the last uh, 72 hours. <laughs> I'm going to combine two questions. They're different questions, but two of them. Um, often one's dealing with, uh, you know, this probably maybe something you deal with, not what we deal with, but, you know, with, with very, um, you know, single-minded, aggressive journalists who are very confrontational. They've got a very particular view. Is there any, anything that can be done there? And also a second question is uh, another place of genuine, you know, so much aggression and difficulty is our campuses. And I'm sure you deal with a lot there. Any advice for some of the younger people here who've asked about, uh, you know, you know, being active in campus? Uh, so journalists in campus. So number one, uh, I was a spokesperson for the communities of Judea and Samaria back in 2004. And as I said before, sometimes when you have an anti-Israel journalist, there's nothing you can do. But one of the things that I was proud to be a part of back, it's been about 15 plus years or so, uh, we organized a bus tour for the foreign press in Israel. I'm talking about the biggest names, uh, the biggest media organizations, uh, the LA Times and the Associated Press and whatnot. And we took them on a, a tour of Judea and Samaria and we fed them well and we took them to a winery. And uh, honestly, you know, after they had a few glasses of wine, they relaxed. And I'm not saying this is a joke but we wine and dine them. And the Palestinian Authority has been doing this for you know, 50 years now, whining and dining these journalists. Um, and we need, need to take sim, uh, similar initiatives. And again, I read the articles that came out of that uh, tour of Judea and Samaria. And um, I wouldn't say I made any Zionists uh, per se out of those journalists, but I will say that the articles that came back definitely were much more balanced than I saw in the past. So there is a way to get at least somewhat, uh, uh, make somewhat of an impact on, on journalists. But again, others are completely anti-Israel and, and for those, you know, there's not much you can do. In terms of uh, what's going on in, students. in US students, right, on US college campuses, um, you know, I'm here in Israel and, uh, and I don't have that, that problem in terms of having to worry about, you know, any of my kids going to a campus in the U.S. there. But I think if there's the same principle, if you're speaking out against, you know, media bias against Israel, if you have a professor who I know, I've seen this before, who is failing you because of your positions on Israel, 
or because you you wear a kippa if you're a boy or you know any of that stuff you have to speak out you cannot let that slide uh when it comes to uh to a professor you have to talk to the administration about a professor like that i know also it, there's a lot of pressure i know in terms of the anti-israel activism on campus um, and I don't envy those students who sometimes feel like they're a, a big minority on those campuses, but you have to hold your ground, you have to be tough, and you have to speak your mind and share the truth when it comes to Israel uh, on campuses as well. I know it's not easy, it's very difficult, um, but, but I do think it, it can be uh, combated. And you also have, we talked about you know, newspapers, there's also the local papers. When I was a student, I grew up in the States and I went to, did grad school in the U.S. I would often speak out uh, in the local Indianapolis uh, student newspaper at IUPUI. If you've ever heard of that university, when I saw something anti-Israel, I would write a letter to the editor. I would write an op-ed. I'd make my voice heard on campus. And there's no reason kids today can't do the same thing and make their voices heard. Mm-hmm. Final question, then I just want to say one or two thoughts of based on some of the sort of spiritual questions that have been asked, the interplay between the spiritual side and the activism. Um, is there any material, somebody proposed a question about, is there any you know, particular documentary or material that you think is really informative about Israel? And it's, uh, you know, uh, I'll just read you the, the question straight out from the, from the chat and you can, uh, um, you can uh, let us know. The question is as follows. Um, you know, is there any material that, you know, is there any documentary or anything that you're aware of that is sort of short and sharp and can give people a, uh, an understanding of, of what's going on in Israel? There's so much information out there. You have so many organizations who are putting out materials on a daily basis. Um, if you will allow me to do so, I, I definitely would recommend, just as an example, uh, since somebody asked, if you go to, let's say, Palestinian Media Watch, it's an organization that monitors what is being said in the official Palestinian Authority media on television, on the radio, on the internet, what's being taught in the official uh, Palestinian Authority run schools, whether it's their curriculum or the UNRWA cur curriculum. You can ignore, if you want, you can ignore the commentary that they give. You know, I personally you know, find it helpful uh, in, in terms of understanding what's going on there. But if you just look at the translations that Palestinian Media Watch, they translate from Arabic into English and also into Hebrew. If you just read what the other side is saying and how they're educating the next generation of children to grow up hating Israel and hating Jews, uh, there's so much to learn from it. Unfortunately, it's a terrible thing. It's a very, very sad thing. So I would definitely recommend you know, turning to Palestinian Media Watch and I could probably list a bunch of other uh, organizations or resources, um, which I find extremely helpful in understanding the situation. If people want to contact me afterwards, I can give them, you know, lists of, of different organizations and individuals, you know, people that I know uh, who are doing amazing work for Israel on social media, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. I'm happy, I'm happy to share those, uh, those feeds or those handles, if you will. Um, at a later time, but I would start with there. Just listen to what is being said, ignore the commentary, listen to what is being said in Arabic, uh, and then you compare that with the messages you're seeing on CNN and some of the other networks in English, compare the two messages and you'll get a sense of uh, what we're dealing with here, okay. unfortunately. Right. Thank you so, so much, Josh. I just want to make a comment on the Pleasure. spiritual side, if I may. I just see that uh, there are a couple of questions that uh, people have asked about. What about learning Torah and unity and tefillah? And I know you spoke about tefillah. So perhaps just to say that, of course, uh, you know, there's always an interplay between the spiritual reality and what's happening in the ground, especially for us as Jews. That's, that's clear. We always have to find the right, uh, you know, the right interplay between emunah, between faith, between uh, belief in Hashem, between tefillah and between human activism. I saw that Rav Chaim Brisk once wrote, he says, you have to have belief in Hashem as if no activism helps. And you have to have, do your shtadlut, 110% your activism as if there's no belief in Hashem. We have to have it both ways. So yes, we have to, we know that, you know, 
there's nothing, you know, the success of whatever we do is very much dependent on our spiritual situation. And therefore, tefillah and tehillim is very important. And as, as, as Josh said, it's, it's, it's an absolutely critical part of what we do. Learning to write something we should be doing all of the time. Chazal do emphasize, though, that tefillah and tehillim are something more in times of emergency. When there's an emergency, people are less learning, they're davening. The davening is a sense of emergency for a particular situation. Yes, we should be learning all of the time. It should be ongoing tefillah. But in times of t- challenge and difficulties, we are we, we daven. And somebody spoke about unity. Absolutely. The more we can all work for unity, we all know the koach of unity. And the more there can be unity between Jews and we can come together, there's no doubt that a commitment to Torah, a commitment to Jewish unity, each and every one of us, and of course a commitment to tefillah, all has its power. And we have to invest 110% in that. And we also, of course, have to invest 110% in what in activism. So I think it's uh, it's been really uh, uh, wonderful what you said, uh, Josh. How, uh, to, uh, jo- that there's something every every one of us can do. Knowledge is power. We have been formed. We have to keep learning and keep knowing. In the moment you've got facts and you've got knowledge, sometimes simple facts themselves are, are you know, as Rav Cook said, a little bit of light dispels a lot of darkness. A little bit of truth can often be something which dispels darkness and confusion. What you spoke about is talking also to our representatives, the politicians, uh, you know, people in our district who often, you know, don't always know what's going on. We should share what's going on and at the very least know how strongly we feel about things that are, you know, that uh, that, in, that their, their, their constituents have a very different view. And of course, the thing that you spoke a lot about, that every one of us, all of us can interact of all ages and social media. Sometimes small little videos can go very, very far. Op-eds in the regular media, writing to the newspapers, each and every one of us, be it social media, written media, there's a lot each and every one of us can do. And we should go ahead and do that. So uh, thank you, Josh, for that uh, those uh, the, the the inspiration to action, the call to action. Thank you to again to Yaakov Ami during his absence, to for for highlighting a, a deep understanding of what's going on and where we're heading. And may Hashem bless us all, bless the state of Israel, bless all of its citizens, bless the Jewish people to ultimately do what we need to do. And uh, Bezrat Hashem have a, uh, a just, peaceful, and uh, you know, solution as soon as possible. We thank you very much. Thank you, Amen. Rachi team, to everyone for what you've done, and wishing everyone Shabbat Shalom and Chag Sameach. Thank you, thank you. And people can feel free to co- contact Josh directly, as you said, Josh Hasten. You can look him up. Thank you so much, Josh. Deeply appreciate it. Shabbat Shalom, Chag Sameach. Shabbat Shalom, Chag Sameach.